From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Louisiana has no shortage of invasive species. Spend a day along the waterways and bayous and you'll find a variety of residents not native to the sportsman's paradise. Feral hogs, apple snails, zebra mussels, kudzu, roso cane mealybug, Asian carp, the list goes on and on. All introduced to the habitat by humans and able to thrive in the diverse ecosystem. But perhaps one of the most notorious is the nutria. Nutria, Myocaster, Coypus. They were brought to the United States in 1899 originally, but they weren't brought into Louisiana until 1933. And they were introduced to provide another product for fur trappers in North America. And we now have a recreational season which allows hunters to go out. It's different from all the other hunting, but I'd say it's close to like squirrel hunting or duck hunting, something like that. And a lot of hunters not only hunt them for the sport and also to help abate the coastal erosion, but also as a food item. During the 90s, uh, the, the fur value went down, and uh, to get the trapper to go out there and, and trap more nutria, uh, we put a value on the meat, so we launched a, a promotion of, of how to cook nutria. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Hi, I'm Miss Louisiana Holly Conway on behalf of the Louisiana Propane Dealers. I'm sure you know that clean, affordable propane gas is used in houses across our state. It's used in cooking, hot water heaters, drying clothes, and heating homes. But did you know that if you ever run out of propane, you need a certified dealer to inspect your system for leaks before it's refilled? That's the law. Propane is a safe and exceptional energy source, and we want to keep it that way. The iconic whooping crane is back in Louisiana. If you spot a whooping crane, remember, observe and admire it from a distance, and always report any harmful activity. You can always help the Louisiana Whooping Cranes thrive by donating to LAWFF.org. Thank you to Chevron and the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation for their generous support. I won this boat to fish in the CCA Star Tournament. Felt so real for about a week. <laughs> My name is Amelia and I'm from Abbeville and I won this boat. There's 100 redfish waiting. It all starts Memorial Day weekend. Sign up today. The French call them ragondin. In South America, you'll hear them say koipu, but most Southerners know of it as a rat, a swamp rat. Now there's kind of a controversy about how the nutria got a foothold here in Louisiana. Most people agree that it was brought over here from South America on an experimental basis to try to develop it for something in the fur industry. The uh, story goes that the McElhaney family had some and that a hurricane destroyed the pens and they were released into the wild and uh, never looked back and like a lot of other invasive species have really increased their population. And Nutria found Louisiana coastland 
perfect habitat for them. It's uh, nice freshwater marshes that have uh, that emergent vegetation that they really enjoy eating. Between 1960 and 1980, Nutria made up the backbone of the Louisiana fur industry. We were harvesting over a million Nutria every single year and selling them uh, to China and Russia uh, into the fur market that way. Since their introduction to Louisiana, Nutria have caused extensive damage to coastal wetlands. The decline of the fur industry allowed Nutria populations to climb. But in recent years, they've established a $5 bounty on Nutria tails for commercial traffic. Also established a recreational hunting season from September to February, and that has made a difference. We started in 2002, 2003 was the first season of the Coastwide Nutria Control Program. Uh, that season, we estimated that there were about 82,000 acres of damage caused by nutria along our coasts. And in the past 17 seasons, we have harvested over five and a half million nutria from coastal Louisiana, and we've reduced the amount of uh, marsh damage from that 82,000 acres to down to around 16,000 acres. So we've had a dramatic reduction in the amount of damage caused by nutria. So with the trapping industry down for nutria, alligators were also at a low point, and that was the number one predator to hold the nutria numbers in check. Uh, there, we started a campaign, myself and Chef Philippe Parola, to try to develop nutria as a food item. Uh, nutria is very similar in flavor to rabbit. It's high protein, low cholesterol. It's really a great meat. But there's two things that really work against the nutria. Orange teeth and a rat looking tail. In fact, a lot of people to this day still refer to them as nutria rats. And that does not give them much a chance in the food industry. Coming up next, besides an alligator, how many other creatures can you harvest that cause coastal erosion, can be sold for profit, and provide great table fare? I think it's been pretty effective for as knocking the, the population down, but they're, they're populating out of control. And I think there needs to be more done about it, for as more people need to get involved in this to help save Louisiana. Get him. Oh, get him again. You got him. You wounded him. Get him again. Get him again. Get him again. Yeah, he did. That a girl. <laughs> Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get delivery seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D. I've been using Louisiana fish fry products so much, even the kids are getting into it. Find your bag, pour and boil, a great crawfish every time. And whether you're boiling crawfish, shrimp, or crabs, Louisiana fish fry products use the perfect blend of garlic, onion, spices, and salt for your seafood boil. So look for the bright yellow bag and pour and boil with Louisiana fish fry products. Venice is known as the fishing capital of the world, but for a hunter, the marshes along the Mississippi River Delta are a prime location to target nutria. It ain't no real particular route we take. We just ride until we see them, and we might backtrack two or three times and still kill nutrients on it. But, you know, typical day is all day of play. We're looking for this 
we're looking for green grass because the nutria is wanting green grass. That's what they basically want. So when you're riding along these canals and you're starting to see little pods, like cane pods broke down, there's nutria around. It's just, are they gonna be on the bank or are they gonna be back in the grass? The sport of nutria hunting serves a threefold purpose. First, removing nutria preserves the health of the Louisiana coast. The damage I've seen from the nutria out here are um, land that was once there is no longer there. It's because your root system is what holds this land in here. You have this little creature that comes in and eats the root system. So what happens when your tidal flow comes in, you have the roots that are not there anymore that washes the bank away and therefore the nutria eating us out of a house and a home right now. Their own house and home. Their own house and home. Another problem with nutria um, is that they are very, very good at making more nutria. A uh, female nutria becomes uh, sexually mature at six months of age and she becomes pregnant and typically she has a litter of about four to five kits, but they can have up to 12 per litter. And then within one to two days, she's receptive to becoming pregnant again. And so not only does this female have a litter of nutria on the ground, but she's also carrying the next uh, litter of buns in the oven. Some nests, I'm telling you, you get up to a nest and they'll start scattering. They might be 10 nutria sitting on that one nest. And you think it's only two or three of them, but they're in a pile and they're under the grass. They just come out like rats. When I was a kid, my brother and I used to watch the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they had this giant rat, and his name was Splinter. And Splinter is a great name, because that's what they're doing to all the land out here, and they look just like that. You know, you would think going out and shooting something like a nutria could be pretty boring, but if you saw those two girls, every time they'd spot one of those nutria uh, scurrying through the marsh or trying to duck down beneath the lilies, they kind of got excited and pumped up about it and, and really made an enjoyable hunt out of it. Oh, get them again. You got it. It's like, a, you, you're driving and you see a nutria and you just like can hurry up and shoot it. I don't know, it's just like a fast action and I guess it's really fun. It's, it's different from all the other hunting, but I'd say it's close to like squirrel hunting or duck hunting, something like that. Because people in my advisory, they're like, ew, you touched a rat. Um, they're safe in water. <laughs> Before today, my only uh, real experience with Nutria was at the Beast Feast in Metairie at Rummel. When you see their teeth close up, you can really tell the destruction that they can do. To me, they're just as bad as pigs because they breed a lot, they have huge litters, and they're prolific, and they do a lot of damage as we've seen around here. And I think that people have kind of put them by the wayside. Pigs have become more of the uh, nuisance species people like to target, but I think we need to go after them a little bit harder good day you kill over 100. I mean we've done killed up to 200 in a day and the best conditions for hunting nutrients is right after a cold front where it's still real cold but the sun shines and they'll be piled up on piles. Second, thanks to the Nutria Bounty Program, the sport is profitable for the hunter. I think it's been pretty effective for as knocking the, the population down but they're, they're populating out of control. And Eat I think it. there needs to be more done about it, as far as more people need to get involved in this to help save Louisiana. Each season we get around 400 people who actually register for the Coastwide Nutrient Control Program, but only about 60% are active participants. So I think what happens is that a lot of people will uh, enroll in the program just for opportunistic purposes. So if they're out duck hunting and they don't cat they don't shoot any ducks, but there's some nutria around, then they'll harvest some nutria and, and turn in the tails that way. But uh, so we always have more people enroll in the program than we have actually participate. And third, despite their appearance, nutria meat is great eating. And any hunter will tell you a nutria hunt is just plain fun. I don't think there's really no future left in it because you have all these conservative groups of you can't put fur on you because it's mean. To me, we have a very good resource down here that is really going to waste. And there should be something that a collection site 
to take this. We could feed homeless. We could, I mean, there's endless possibilities with it. There's plenty of homeless people that would probably eat it. So we did some work for conservation for the wetlands today. So what happens from here? I know just the guy to bring them to. That uh, the, the Nutria uh, era, which was probably 18 years ago or so, done, uh, that was something that was very uh, challenging because of the look of the of the beast. And but we succeeded. And there's one thing to be said: um, many chefs got on board. Uh, it was in grocery store Nutria sausages and uh, Nutria smoke out at hind saddle. But Nutria is good to eat. Play on a barbecue pit. Use recipes. And today, you don't have no much problem with Nutria. You don't hear them creating much problem because a lot of people are there putting both nutria when they catch them on the barbecue pit and that's a fact. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. 50 years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. 50 years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Welcome back. You saw us hunt the Nutria in Plaquemines Parish. We're now at Fred's on the River with Chef Philippe Parola, who you saw in a previous episode where we went out and harvested Asian carp. Tell us about your whole mentality when it comes to nu uh, nuisance animals. Well, I've been working on that for quite some time, actually quite a few years, uh, starting with the wild boar, the snow goose, and then back in the early 90s, we worked with the, the beast of uh, the swamp beast. And um, actually, Don Dubuque was a part of this particular promotion with the wildlife and fishery, trying to uh, put a value on the nutria. Um, during the 90s, uh, the, the fur value went down, and uh, to get the trapper to go out there and and trap more nutria, uh, we put a value on the meat, so we launch a, a promotion of, of how to cook nutria. And when um, you have it cleaned, it honestly looks like it could be a rabbit. Yeah, this is a hind saddle, by the way. Uh, this is the best part of the nutria. This is uh, really where all the, the, the muscle and the, 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 the main protein are located, so uh, we're gonna cook the hind saddle today. Let's get started. Okay. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna be the chef today. Okay. I'm just gonna Sounds supervise. Good. So you're gonna put a little oil over it, all over. And you see how easy that is. And what we're gonna do, folks, is to get something easy for you guys to duplicate uh, in your camp or at home. Uh, if you shoot a nutria, don't hesitate. Don't throw it away. Uh, it's it's good just meat. like rabbit or squirrel. Right. Wanna flip it for okay. me? Yes, we're gonna flip it. A lot more yield right. than a squirrel or a rabbit, and you too. See, they're, they're pretty beefy, and you can see just by the size of this nutria and the ones you saw us harvest, there really weren't any small ones. They, they have a lot to eat on, and they cause a lot of problems, so they get really fat. Uh, how, kind of, how much do you think this one weighed? I would say this one weighed at least 10 or 12 pounds. When we oh, should. wow. Yeah, they, they get pretty big. That's a nice animal. All right. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to uh, baste it with the, uh, the little uh, um, raspberry vinaigrette to so give it a little extra flavor. So you just a little it. salad dressing. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, you can do it in the store and buy whatever you want, just put a, a bunch of them all over. There you go. And, uh, and then we're going to continue bathe it when we grill it with that. So we're going to put some seasoning after that. Forever, you're doing a good job. Thank I'm you. Tell you. You should open, you and Don need to open uh, the Bayou Wild <laughs> restaurant. Restaurant. Absolutely. So we've got a Cajun so, seasoning here. Yeah, all your choice. You know, you, you, you can, you know, put anything that you, uh, you like, salt, pepper only if you want to. Uh, but we like Cajun seasoning because we're in the Cajun land, right? That's right. All right. So literally just okay. three ingredients here to get it cooked. That's it. So you see, folks, what you look like, right? I think anybody could do that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over here, and then we're going to slide it. We got the grill heated up to about 350. 
right here. So we just mentioned a very important part about the nutria on the grill. We're not cooking it to completion. We're really just no. scoring it. Correct, correct. That keep the moisture inside the meat really good. So when you cook it slowly, the meat stay very moist All and right. tender. So what we're going to do here, we have the the, the black pot. We're going to put the mirepoix. Mirepoix. All right, which is a combination of onion, celery, and carrot, and garlic. And so, garlic. Got to have garlic. Yes, there you go. You got to. So you kind of sweat this. That's a new term for yeah, me. Yeah, sweat. S sweat the sweat vegetables. Sweat it out. You see the steam coming out? Uh -huh. There you go. And you can smell actually how it nice it's yeah. yeah, you can definitely. So that get the flavor of all of those vegetables. And then what we're going to do here now is we're going to get the beast. The beast. Out. And you can see now that it's got seized up. You got the little mark on the beautiful, don't it? And then we're going to put it right here into the pot. Right here. You see That's that? That's perfectly. Then, we're going to put a combination of beef broth. Yeah, squeeze that one. And vegetable broth. There you go. So you see now? Mm -hmm. We're going to make a little stew. And then what we're going to do, we're going to use a little bit of a the rest raspberry of the that we have left over. Okay. A touch of Cajun, again, seasoning. This is actually starting to look pretty good. I was a little on the fence about this, but it's actually coming together pretty well. You see well. that? Look at this. All yeah. right, so All now right. go ahead, cover it up, and we're going to slow cook it probably for a good 45 minutes Perfect. or so, okay? All right, let's let All her right. go, maybe turn it up a little bit. Yes, there we go. And when we come back, we will shred it up and That's right. plate it up and see if it's good. And eat it up. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Welcome back. We're here with Chef Parola. We're at Fred's on the River, and we're going to check out this nutria that we've been cooking for about an hour and a half. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a, uh, uh, you got me here, an old one, not a yes. young one. So the older they get, the longer it's going to take. But I'm going to tell you, wait and see. So, so we've been simmering it. Yes. So now you see uh, how beautiful it look like, right? And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to get the hind saddle. Put it on the table? Yeah, we're going to put it right there then uh, into the, I think we can take the whole thing. Pretty much, there you go, pretty much like this. And you, you know it's done when the meat starts falling Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can look oh, at yeah. it and you know, look, look at this. Done. You know, this is easy. It's like a pot, uh, pot roast. Yeah, it, it's an easy process. So what you do now is, look at how beautiful that is. It does Tender. look good. I mean, really, and, and the smell of it is so wonderful. So you say, I mean, this is just, oh, this is belly meat. That, uh, it's also very nice. And I'm going to use my finger and put it out. Oh, God, this is hot, too. Look at the, the, the legs, look at the muscle right there. Look at how beautiful that is, too. So, you get some of that good meat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they got good. I mean, that's what you have to do is wait. You see the bones come out very mm -hmm. nice? That, that's what you want. And you so. could even take it out and pork shred it oh, out. Oh, yeah. Like if, you if, if it was not so hot, you know, I could, I could cut them up and chop it up. And so many things you can do. And if you want a, a gumbo idea. Yeah, it'd be uh, great for gumbo. Here, here it is. You know, you can put it up and put some. Uh, um, Look at this broth right here. You put a little dark roux on that, and actually, it could be a gumbo itself right here. See that? Mm -hmm. How nice it is. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of that juice. Just a little and, bit. We won't make our taco no, 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 no. soggy now. Yeah, yeah. So, there Perfect. you go. So, you can go there. How many we have at uh, that table? There. There. There's a couple of them. I think we got enough tacos. Do we have enough? Five. Look at this, how beautiful that is. You know, the nutria, the, how nutritious that is, too. So, all right, we've got our tacos made up here. We're going to go give them the taste test and let people go. who have never had Nutria see how good it is. I know, I got one more little sauce to make on this one. 
Let's do this right. All there right. you go. So who here at this table has tried Nutri? Raise your hand. Okay. So y'all are first timers. All right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Get that oh, one there. Yeah. They, they never had it. She don't want it. She don't want to try it. She don't even eat meat. Oh, she said she don't want to eat it. Oh, I don't want to eat meat. Well, you have to ask yourself, when is the last time you have natural protein on your table? Natural protein on your table. Mm -hmm. You never have that anymore. You can't find that. Only in the bayou. Nutria is natural protein. Think about it. So you see? All right, we got five it? converted that like the Nutria. There you go. I think uh, we have a winner. Thanks, Chef. Good. Thank you. neighbor Tony, he looked at me and said, man, you're crazy. You're about to leave out in this weather. And I said, sir, I have a tag fish to go catch. I won this beautiful boat catching a tag red fish in Venice, Louisiana. There's 100 redfish waiting. It all starts Memorial Day weekend. Sign up today. Whooping cranes are back in Louisiana. Through the hard work of biologists and key strategic partners, whooping cranes have been restored back to the cultural icon they once held. But you can still help. To donate to the whooping crane program, visit LAWFF.org. Thank you to Chevron and the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation for their generous support. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Bayou Wild. Hope you'll join us again next week. And also check out the Bayou Wild collection. Get you some of these neat shirts and caps. Go online and do that. And we're also available on social media. That's right. You can check us out on Facebook and YouTube as well as Instagram. We'll see you next week.